In this video, I'm going to show you how you could use a MIDI keyboard controller with Reaper. Now, the purpose of using a MIDI keyboard controller is so we can record or trigger MIDI sounds in our computer, whether it be a piano or a synth or a drum machine, or even just to control any parameter available inside Reaper. Now, there's most likely going to be two different options to choose from, either a USB keyboard that plugs directly into your computer using a USB port, or an older keyboard that only has MIDI inputs or outputs available, in which case you'll need either a computer audio interface that has MIDI connections or a dedicated MIDI device. But once it's set up, it should behave or work the same. Some MIDI keyboards can be pretty small with unweighted keys, while others can have as many as 88 weighted keys with piano-like feel or action. But once again, once we set this up, they should behave in a similar way. You'll start by reading the instructions that come with your unit or device. Some require drivers or installers to get them working, while others are simply plug and play USB devices. But definitely check out the manuals that come with your unit and follow them and install anything necessary. And once everything is installed and plugged in, we can open Reaper and go to our preferences. Up here, in the options menu and go down and choose preferences. Then we'll go over here under MIDI devices and we should see our devices show up. The inputs up here and the outputs down here. As we can see, mine aren't showing up because I have them unplugged. So let's plug them in and let's choose reset all MIDI devices. And now they show up. The first one is an 88 key MIDI controller, and the second one is an audio device with MIDI inputs that I'm going to use for a vintage keyboard with only MIDI output and no USB. Now, to set these up, we can either right click and choose our options over here, or we can just double click them. We could change the device name or create an alias. I would recommend that if you want to change the name, just change it over here. I'm going to call this MIDI keyboard 88 keys, and it will show up in Reaper that way. Then I'm gonna enable the input from this device. We could also enable the input for control messages, but I'm not gonna do that just now. We'll go over that later. Then I'll do the same thing for this device. Enable it and rename it Vintage Keyboard. Now both inputs should show up in Reaper. We could do the same thing for our outputs. Down here, we could enable them. We could send clock to that device, which makes more sense if we're dealing with a sequencer or a drum machine. Right now, we don't need it. And we'll set it up for both of them. So now, if we close this and create a new track by double clicking over here, we can go into record on this track and set our MIDI input up over here. Choose it, go down to MIDI, and we'll see my MIDI keyboard 88 keys, which is USB, shows up here. And the vintage keyboard shows up here. So I'll choose this, all channels. Now we can look over here if I play my keyboard, and we'll see input show up on the meter. To see this better, let's go up here to the view menu and choose the virtual keyboard. So we get a keyboard down here we could see the input from a MIDI. And again, if I play my USB MIDI keyboard, we see input on the meter, so we know it works. Or we could switch it to my vintage keyboard, which is plugged into my audio interface on the MIDI ins. And if we play that, we see input there as well. Or we could choose both at the same time. We can go here and choose all MIDI inputs, all channels. And if I play either my USB MIDI keyboard or my vintage keyboard, we see input going in. But we're not hearing anything yet. We need to create a sound source 
or use a plugin to get some sound. So I'm going to go up here to the effects button and we could choose an instrument that could be triggered by MIDI. And I'm going to choose Rhea Synth because I know you have it as it comes with Reaper. Although we could add any third party VST instruments if we like. So let's double click this one and it looks like this. I'm going to make it a sawtooth wave, which sounds like this. Now I tend to add a filter after this. So I'm going to double click over here, type in filter, and I'm going to choose the Moog four pole filter. And we put it right after the synth. Now we could adjust our cutoff and our resonance to make it sound more spitty. Now, if you have a fader or a knob on your keyboard, we could adjust any of these parameters in real time. But in order to do that, we first need to go back to our preferences and go into my MIDI keyboard, double click it, and turn on enable input for control messages. Choose this, hit OK, and close it. And now I could just touch this fader, go to the parameter menu, and choose Learn. And I could just move any fader or knob on my USB MIDI keyboard, and it shows up right here. Hit OK, and we can move that fader or knob and adjust it in real time. So it gives us real-time control of any parameter we choose. And we can choose any parameter in this plugin or any plugin in Reaper. So that's pretty much it. That's using a MIDI keyboard controller in Reaper. I hope you learned something. Hope you could use it. And I'll see you next time. Thanks. Bingo, boys, let's go.